जी सर आप स्टार्ट कर लें अच्छा जी मैं यहां स्क्रीन पे आना शुरू हूं तो कैन दी पार्टिसिपेंट्स हियर मी बिकॉज माय प्रेजेंटेशन इज नॉट बीइंग प्रोजेक्टेड एट द मोमेंट एक इसका ग्रुप अलग से बना लें जिसमें जितने पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैं दे कैन पार्टिसिपेट इन दैट बिकॉज आई टुडे आई इंटेंड टू पुट दिस लेक्चर ऑफ माइंड द होल दैट हैज बीन प्रेजेंटेड प्रीवियसली इन टू प्रीवियस सेशंस एंड टुडेज दिस इज वन कंपोजिट वन व्हिच आई कैन प्लेस ऑन दैट एंड बिकॉज दिस वाज द डिमांड दैट द प्रेजेंटेशन यू सी इसमें बात यह है कि दिस इज द स्लाइड व्हिच इज बीइंग प्रेजेंटेड नाउ इफ वी लुक एट द अदर फॉर्मेट एंड यू सी बिलो दिस स्लाइड देयर इज दिस टेक्स्ट आल्सो सो यू कैन रीड दैट अ लिटिल बिट डिटेल अबाउट द द कंटेंट ऑफ द स्लाइड ऑन दिस similarly in various uh, slides you will see that there is a content below that and i would want you to look at that and read more than that and uh, explore where other things are available ठीक है राइट right. ये सामने वाली बेशक बंद कर दें थोड़ी लाइट्स और राइट गुड मॉर्निंग अस्सलाम वालेकुम एवरीवन ये माइक ये स्पीकर बंद हो जाएगा uh while well, this particular topic has gone on for a little too long this is the third time that we are still at it but uh i uh, intend to uh keep to the time one and uh, finish the topic usually in one presentation in future and just to recap uh, we covered a little bit about uh, uh the perimenopausal bleeding uh, in the previous two presentations and uh, also started off on uh, postmenopausal bleeding in the previous presentation uh, so uh, we'll uh, recap uh, a few of the slides which were presented last time uh, the definition of uh, postmenopausal bleeding we must be clear about it that after uh one years amenorrhea we can say that a woman who is in, in that age group that she would have achieved menopause and uh, uh postmenopausal bleeding is not that uncommon uh the incidence of this has been found to be about 10% in uh, uh, the period which is uh, uh, after that one year period that is uh, after she has been declared as menopausal 
Uh, the concern in that age is of uh, uh, development of endometrial carcinoma, which is there in about 10% of cases, though of those who present with postmenopause bleeding, and therefore evaluation from that standpoint is required. Uh, another point to be remembered is that uh, endometrial polyps and endometrial hyperplasia is quite common in this age group and uh, the incidence is quoted as to be almost up to 40 percent. While we are at the subject of endometrial uh, cancer or uh, to rule that out, uh, not all cases of postmenopausal bleeding or not even those 10 percent are necessarily because of that. And therefore, it is important that uh, other causes of bleeding from the genital tract, other malignancies of the genital tract, and uh, conditions which can lead to bleeding, uh, which are uh, or uh, 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 which are uh, or those structures which are in an in anatomic uh, proximity with the genital tract, that also should be part of the workup, which is the urinary tract and the uh, lower intestinal tract, uh, in addition to, of course, various uh, components of the genital tract. Now, uh, this is uh, uh, a slide which I had explained to you earlier on, and uh, one of the uh, reasons for projecting this area, which is also that you need to look at some of uh, the, yes, uh, the references, explore them yourself, go on, and uh, uh, you'll find more things because it is not possible for anyone to put in everything that is related to the topic in that one presentation. And therefore, uh, this is to uh, stimulate your curiosity in uh, finding out various uh, studies which are associated with that and which are quoted, the major ones. Now, this is uh, one which uh, was, uh, uh, it, it's a meta-analysis of 129 studies in which more than 40 patients' uh, review was uh, taken. And uh, in this, it was found uh, the general incidence quoted. Now, you can quote that in uh, this study uh, published in 2018 in JAMA that uh, around 9% of women with postmenopausal bleeding was disco uh, diagnosed with endometrial cancer and uh, those who have endometrial cancer they almost uh, all of them at least 90 percent of them they present with postmenopausal bleeding these are the risk factors now uh, i would uh, also want you to uh, uh, think about how would obesity cause endometrial hyperplasia Think about it. What are the different mechanisms? Uh, where do the unopposed estrogens come in? One is atrogenic, you give from outside. Another condition is polycystic ovaries. Of course, they also produce. And how does obesity cause that? And why is nulliparity is a factor? You need to explain that. I am not going to do that. You would do, you would explore and you will uh, do it on your own. And similarly, this is a long list of uh, risk factors for endometrial cancer which were previously also uh, shown and uh, uh, you need to have explanation for these as well older age high fat diet low levels of physical activity etc and uh, you need to have explanation for that there is an association of not only postmenopausal bleeding but also that uh, if it's the uh, postmenopausal bleeding happens in a woman who is less than 50 years of age then the chances of her having endometrial carcinoma are lesser than uh, a woman who is older in age. As the age advances, the incidence of endometrial carcinoma increases. Similarly, there are other situations like obesity, diabetes. Uh, they also enhance the uh, possibility of endometrial carcinoma. Transvaginal ultrasound over the last couple of decades has uh, attained uh, a lot of importance uh, in this. It was transvaginal ultrasound was introduced in 1980, particularly in the field of assisted reproductive techniques and assessment of ovarian stimulation and ovarian follicular development. But it has attained uh, that prominence in estimation of uh, the endometrial thickness here, which is shown to be uh, reasonably thick here. 
and uh, because of its wider acceptance and its being non-invasive, etc. And uh, also now enough studies have been carried out which show that association of endometrial thickness with the uh, possibility of developing endometrial ca cancer. And as was previously uh, on the previous occasion said that uh, an endometrium which is less than four millimeters thick is uh, unlikely to harbor uh, endometrial cancer. And uh, so much so that uh, uh, some people would go to the extent of not recommended, uh, recommending further evaluation. Now, there are these uh, three studies which have been quoted again. I, I presented it last time, which showed that a cutoff line at five millimeter, this was uh, in a, a larger number of women, almost 6,000. And this is again a meta-analysis of 35 uh, prospective studies in which it was shown that uh, endometrial thickness has a relevance and correlation with the possibility of endometrial carcinoma uh, uh, diagnosis. So this again, less than four millimeter. And uh, then a review concluded that five millimeter or less cutoff uh, rules out endometrial pathology with a high degree of certainty. On the other hand, there were also a few. My to me unmute here. Mera to unmute hai. Sir, आप की आवाज़ clear आ रही presentation भी show हो रही है. अब मैं तो presentation तो अब show होएगी ना मैंने वो दूसरी तरफ ले गया था. मेरा माइक तो अनम्यूट है हां जी आ रही है आवाज अब हां जी सर बिल्कुल क्लियर आ रही है अच्छा ऑलराइट सो ऑन द अदर हैंड देयर आर सम स्टडीज व्हिच डू नॉट एडवाइस टू टोटली डिपेंड ऑन अल्ट्रासाउंड थिकनेस whether we do that or not, but that, that's a fact that not in all patients we can uh, uh, access or we can have an access to uh, measurement of uh, endometrial thickness because of body habitus. If the, the patient is too fat, of course, in that case, we can uh, resort to transvaginal ultrasound. And uh, also in those in uh, whom uh, the uterine uh, anatomy, that's because, which is distorted because of, say, fibroids, that can uh, 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 affect the visualization of uh, endometrium. And, uh, and of course, in such cases, uh, we know that we can resort to other measures. Now, what is the accuracy of endometrial sampling compared to the endometrial thickness? Uh, if we find that uh, there is increased endometrial thickness in postmenopausal bleeding, further invasive testing is required. So you found that on uh, ultrasound, that endometrium is thick. So we go on to do that. And uh, what do we do? Previously, diagnostic DNC used to be the standard uh, treatment. As a matter of fact, it was said when I started my training that if a woman above 40 years of age presents with abnormal uterine bleeding, uh, diagnostic DNC was mandatory to assess the uh, histological uh, uh, appearance of the endometrium. Now that has been replaced by less invasive and outpatient, outpatient evaluation through endometrial biopsy devices and also by outpatient hysteroscopy guided biopsies. So even uh, uh, an improvement on uh, DNC, conventional DNC, which is hysteroscopic guided biopsy, uh, that has also uh, been uh, uh, improved to an extent that it can be carried out in outpatient settings. Uh, this is one uh, meta-analysis which says that uh, the PIPEL device that detects up to 99.6%, which is almost 100%, and uh, VABRA uh, uh, device uh, detection rate is uh, VABRA, VABRA, not VABRA, Vabra is 97.1 percent, and this is this is uh, very thin. I'm sure that all of you have seen. Have you all seen Pipel? Uh, you see, it has an outer sheath and an inner uh, plunger, or uh, well, you can call it uh, uh, 
uh, well, for the sake of uh, simplicity, we'll call it as a plunger. But this is something which, when pulled out, creates a, um, a negative pressure and sucks in the uh, endometrium or uh, uh, part of the endometrium and the uh, uh, cellular component within the endometrial cavity. Uh, how it is done is that it is passed into the uterus here and you uh, pull out the plunger or the piston, as I said, you withdraw it. That creates a negative pressure here. And while you withdraw it, uh, you also, you withdraw only the piston or the plunger and the sheath remains in C2. And uh, you, you start then rotating uh, the sheath and also uh, um, bring it to and fro. So this movement also is required, uh, which is here, to and fro. So that would uh, get an adequate amount of sample from the endometrium. So this is uh, Pipel and this is Webra. Webra is uh, uh, again a catheter which has, uh, the next diagram would show the detail of this. And it is attached with a tube here and you can attach a syringe here with which you pull, create negative pressure and the secretions would come into, through this tubing into the uh, the, this tube, or it can be just like this. Uh, there can be, uh, 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 you know, the chamber here, which is attached with the catheter, and you attach a, a syringe here, conventional syringe, to create that negative pressure. And you, this is uh, another model of this. This you see is the enlarged view of the tip of the Webra uh, uh, catheter or sampling device. So, uh, Pipel and Webra. Uh, this is something which you can do in the clinic in OPD, and uh, the uh, as we have seen in this, the the uh, detection rate is uh, uh, quite high, and uh, as a matter of fact, better than the, what we used to get on diagnostic DNC. Now, uh, the uh, indications for endometrial biopsy would be if the endometrial thickness is more than four, uh, four millimeter on ultrasound or endometrium is not visualized because of fibroids, because of distorted anatomy, or there is recurrent postmenopausal bleeding and that is regardless of um, uh, endometrial thickness. In postmenopausal women, the papal sampler's sensitivity so far as uh, endometrial cancer is concerned is 99%. Now here I would want you your homework is that you go two things. Last time I told you to explore incidence and prevalence. What is the difference between incidence and prevalence? You should know that. Secondly is sensitivity and specificity. What do we mean by sensitivity of a test and its, its specificity as well? because those will take into consideration false negative, false positive, and the ability of the test also to differentiate between those who have the disease and those who do not have the disease. So sensitivity and specificity are uh, terms which are utilized for this, and that is your homework. So far as uh, endometrial cancer is concerned, people's sensitivity is quite high, that it would diagnose those cases who have endometrial cancer in 99% of cases. Um, uh, look at the specificity. I, I'm not going to talk about that here. So far as endometrial hyperplasia is concerned, it is sensitivity is not as high as uh, of uh, endometrial cancer. And that is particularly for atypical endometrial hyperplasia. Please remind me at the end of or near the end because I'm going to uh, take a, a few minutes about the endometrial hyperplasia. Uh, I have added a, another slide to that and uh, a little bit of explanation for that. Now, if there is insufficient sampling, what, what does that mean? Quite a few times it happens that uh, we uh, perform uh, uh, a sampling or even uh, endometrial, uh, uh, even on DNC you would find, uh, because it still is practiced, that if you do a diagnostic DNC in a woman whose endometrium has been reported to be thicker and you find that there are no curatings, so what do we do then? So it, it was found in 66 patients with insufficient tissue and endometrial sampling 
that the cancer was there in about uh, there was uh, the, the six percent incidence of cancer, which means that if you do not find and uh, a, a sampling, you cannot get a sample for uh, cytological or histological workup on sampling through Webra or through PEPEL or through DNC, then you cannot reassure the uh, patient that she doesn't has any problem and that uh, she need not worry because there is that incidence. And uh, if uh, so, therefore, women with insufficient sample and endometrial thickness of five or more should not be reassured and they should uh, have uh, uh, another method of uh, uh, assessment. So reassurance with insufficient endometrial atrophy on hysteroscopy and ultrasound again. And if endometrium is less than four millimeters, no need for hysteroscopy and curatage. But remember to investigate on recurrence of symptoms. Now, what is the accuracy of hysteroscopy in detecting, uh, detecting endometrial carcinoma? First, hysteroscopy versus DNC. Hysteroscopy uh, provides you the opportunity of macroscopic visualization of focal abnormalities. You can see it yourself. And uh, you can also take a biopsy, which is visually directed. You can find that area from where to take that biopsy because there can be a focal uh, pathology. And the, the other advantages are that uh, because of uh, narrower instruments, now you do not need to have anesthesia to do that hysteroscopy, and there is greater patient acceptance. It can be performed in OPD clinic and uh, without anesthesia, and it is useful for excluding endometrial polyps or fibroids. I'll show you at the end some pictures to corroborate this. And therefore, Inpatient hysteroscopy is required only if the outpatient assessment is either inadequate or impossible to perform because of, say, cervical stenosis or uh, too much of discomfort. And what is the accuracy of hysteroscopy in detecting endometrial carcinoma? Um, diagnostic accuracy is high for endometrial cancer but only moderate for endometrial disease defined as cancer and or hyperplasia when there is no clear cut differentiation between that, the hysteroscope, because that is a visual assessment. Now, this is an important study, again, which you can quote. It was carried out especially for ovarian cancer screening, uh, UK collaborative trial for ovarian cancer screening, UK CTOCS whatever it would uh, stand for. This was the world's largest collaborative screening trial, which involved more than 200,000 women in UK. And its essential focus was on ovarian cancer. But one of the conclusions was that transvaginal ultrasound screening for endometrial cancer has high sensitivity in postmenopausal women. So that's another argument in favor of transvaginal assessment of postmenopausal bleeding. Then, Thickened endometrium in asymptomatic postmenopausal. It's, it's an incidental finding. Then what do you do? Should it be investigated further? So uh, in women with endometrial cancer or atypical endometrial hyperplasia who reported no symptoms of postmenopausal bleeding in that study's uh, uh, case, and uh, the cutoff rate was 5 millimeters. So someone who's found to have an endometrial thickness of 5 millimeter or more must be further investigated even if asymptomatic and hysteroscopy easy safe effective method for investigation of asymptomatic women with thickened endometrium more than six millimeter and the commonest pathology was endometrial poly because we previously said that in uh, these women uh, the incidence of polyps is almost up to 40 percent so there is high incidence and therefore if you find that there is that thickness we just saw a patient, Mavish, uh, in room uh, 605. We just uh, saw that, and I'll show you the pictures of that. I have those pictures, and I'll, that's why I took that uh, ultrasound uh, report picture also. Now, sometimes the, the report is that there is endometrial fluid detected by transvaginal sonography. What is the uh, uh, significance of that? Uh, now, again, Presence of endometrial fluid detected by transvaginal ultrasound is a good marker for pathological changes of the endometrium. 
uh, if the endometrial thickness is more than 4 millimeters. If it is less than 4 millimeters, it can be because of cervical stenosis and uh, the presence of uh, uh, endometrial can fluid is not considered to be an indication for further investigation and this is the uh, study which uh, uh, is the basis for that. Risk of malignancy in endometrial polyps in asymptomatic postmenopausal women only 0.1 percent and uh, so uh, th this is again you can quote that that Faraz, uh, Farazi at all in so, so many women they said that the incidence was oh, 0 0.1 percent and uh, uh, carcinoma on a polyp with a mean diameter of 40 millimeter so it is much less much small Polyp diameter was the only variable significantly associated with an abnormal histology in asymptomatic women. Now, there are women, those who present with uh, bleeding. In those, of course, you will go on to assess that. But in those in whom it is found to be... Now, there is an issue with uh, diagnosing uh, uh, or uh, differentiating between a polyp and uh, endometrial thickness. And... Uh, even outpatient department uh, hysteroscopy or uh, hysteroscopy without anesthesia can uh, be helpful in such cases. So follow-up and treatment of endometrial polyps incidentally diagnosed in asymptomatic postmenopausal patients could be safely restricted to a few selected cases based on polyp diameters. If you measure that and only uh, if it is more than 40 millimeter, 40 millimeter or more than that, then you further investigate those. Now, this is uh, uh, a reasonably common problem, tamoxifen and postmenopausal bleeding, because uh, women who are on chemotherapy for uh, uh, carcinoma of the breast, uh, most of them, they are given tamoxifen. And uh, uh, in those, because of uh, the uh, uh, mild estrogenic activity of uh, tamoxifen, although it is... Uh, 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 it, it, it belongs to the class of which medicines? Hmm? Aromatase inhibitors. Aromatase inhibitors actually, uh, like letrozole is also an arom aromatase inhibitor. Uh, actually, they uh, reduce the uh, formation of estrogen, but tamoxifen itself has uh, a weak uh, estrogenic effect. And uh, therefore, it causes the endometrial thickness. Again, I'll show you a picture in which endometrial thickness is shown. And uh, then the incidence of uh, endometrial cancer in those women who have endometrial thickness because of tamoxifen is three to six folds greater and therefore it is important to address that issue. Now this is a schematic diagram of how we... Hello, where are we? One minute, I'm going to stop and start again. Hello, where are we? Slide stuck हो गई है यहाँ में हाँ वहाँ पे चेंज हो रही है ये देखे ना यहाँ पे तो अब यहाँ पे भी चेंज नहीं हो रही इसको मैं स्टॉप प्रेजेंटिंग करके करूँ हम्म अब होगी वीडियो कॉल एंडेड बिकॉज़ ही कनेक्शन वाज लॉस्ट
ਇਹ ਸਾਰੀ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਖੁਦ ਬਣਾਈ ਹੈ ਦੇਖ ਕੇ ਵੈਸੇ ਉਹ ਥੀ ਬਣੀ ਵੀ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਸਾਰੇ ਕਰੋਗੇ ਨਾ ਆਪਣਾ ਹੀ ਕਰੋ ਆਗੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਉਸ ਦਾ ਮਕਸਦ ਇਹ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਤੁਮ ਲੋਗੋ ਕੋ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਉਹ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਏ ਕਿ ਇਸ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਸੇ ਐਸ ਅ ਪੋਸਟ ਗ੍ਰੈਜੂਏਟ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਥੈਟ ਉਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਇਹ ਫਲਾਨੀ ਚੀਜ਼ਾਂ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਚਾਰ ਚੀਜ਼ਾਂ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਤਾਂ ਚਾਰ ਛੇ ਸਲਾਈਡੋ ਮੈਂ ਟੌਪਿਕ ਕਵਰ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਕਈ ਹੋਰ ਵੀ ਇਸ ਕੰਟੈਕਟ ਕਰਦੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਇਹ ਤਾਂ ਤੁਮਾਰੇ ਤੁਮ ਲੋਗੋ ਕੇ ਲਈ ਤਿਆਰ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਦੇਖੋ ਮੇਰੀ ਮਿਹਨਤ ਹੂੰ ਹਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਮੈਂ ਤਾਂ ਲੈਕਚਰਸ ਤਿਆਰ ਕਰ ਰਹਾ ਹਾਂ ਔਰ ਵੀ ਕਰ ਰਹਾ ਹਾਂ ਉਹ ਤੁਮ ਲੋਗੋ ਕੇ ਲਈ ਤਿਆਰ ਕਰ ਲੂ ਕਰੂੰਗਾ ਉਹ ਔਰ ਵੀ ਹੈ ਇਨੀ ਲਾਈਨੋਂ ਪੇ ਇਸੀ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਸੇ ਹਾਂ ਇਹ ਮੈਨੇ ਆਜ ਤਿਆਰ ਕੀ ਵੀ ਆਈ ਆਈ ਵਿਲ ਪੁੱਟ ਥੈਟ ਔਨ ਹਾਂ ਜੀ ਇਹ ਦੇਖੋ ਇਹ ਵਾਲੀ ਥੀ ਨਾ ਜੋ ਓਰੀਜਨਲ ਆਈ ਥੀ ਉਹ ਇਹ ਥੀ ਇਹ ਵਾਲੀ ਇਹ ਅਗਰ ਪ੍ਰੋਜੈਕਟ ਕਰਤੇ ਤਾਂ ਇਸਕਾ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਚੱਲਣਾ ਥਾ ਤੋ ਇਸਕੋ ਫਿਰ ਮੈਨੇ ਇਸ ਮੇ ਕੀਆ ਤੁਮ ਨਾ ਆਪਣੇ ਆਪ ਸੇ ਇੱਕ ਸਵਾਲ ਕੀਆ ਕਰੋ ਕਿ ਕਿਆ ਤੁਮ ਮੇਰੇ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਤੇ ਹੋ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਮੈਂ ਇੱਕ ਦਿਨ ਮੇ ਕਰਤਾ ਹੂੰ ਪ੍ਰੈਕਟੀਕਲ ਨਾ ਨਾ ਤੁਮ ਮੈਂ ਤੋ ਅੱਜ ਸੁਬਾ ਅਬ ਮੈਂ ਅੱਜ 10 ਟੂ 8 ਮੈਂ ਆਈ ਵਾਸ ਗੇਟਿੰਗ ਇਨਟੂ ਮਾਈ ਕਾਰ ਮੈਂ ਆ ਕਰਾਂ ਕਰਨਾ ਤਾ ਤੋ ਮੈਂ ਬੈਠਤੇ ਉਹ ਫੌਰਨ ਮੈਂ ਸੋਚਿਆ ਮੈਂ ਨੇ ਕਾ ਮੈਂ ਤਾਂ ਰਿਟਾਇਰ ਹੋਏ ਵੀ 11 ਸਾਲ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਤੋ ਮੁਝੇ ਹੀ ਸਵੇਰ ਸਵੇਰ ਉੱਠ ਕੇ ਮੈਂ ਆ ਗਿਆ ਤਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਉਂ ਨਾ ਇਸ ਵਕਤ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਗੁੱਡ ਲੌਨ ਅੱਜ ਕੱਲ ਫੂਲ ਬੜੇ ਨਿਕਲੇ ਮੈਂ ਤੋ ਉਧਰ ਮੈਂ ਕਿ ਇਧਰ ਬੈਠ ਕੇ ਮੈਂ ਇਧਰ ਟਾਂਗੇ ਪਸਾਰ ਕੇ ਮੈਂ ਬੈਠੂ ਇਧਰ ਮੈਂ ਚਾਹ ਪੀਊ ਹਾਂ ਔਰ ਮੌਸਮ ਅੱਛਾ ਹੈ ਮੌਸਮ ਇੰਜੋਏ ਕਰੂ ਔਰ ਮੈਂ ਫਟਾਫਟ ਹੀ ਮੇਰਾ ਤਾਂ ਬੜਾ ਦਿਲ ਚਾਹਦਾ ਟਾਈ ਪਹਿਨਣ ਕੋ ਮੈਂ ਪਹਿਨਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਤੋ ਉਹ ਮੈਂ ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਇਧਰ ਆ ਕੇ ਤੋ ਮੈਂ ਇਹ ਜਾਤੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਮੇਰੇ ਸਾਥ ਜਦੋਂ ਆਪਕਾ ਸੱਚਾ ਹੀ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਇਹ ਤੁਮ ਲੋਗ ਔਰ ਫਿਰ ਇਹ ਜਿੰਨੀ ਇਸ ਕੇ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਪੜ੍ਹਾਈ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਜਰਾ ਆਪਣੇ ਆਪ ਸੇ ਰੋਜ਼ ਇਹ ਸਵਾਲ ਕੀਆ ਕਰੋ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਸਰ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਰਿਕੁਐਸਟ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਹੈਲੋ ਸਰ ਮੇਰੀ ਆਪ ਸੇ ਇੱਕ ਰਿਕੁਐਸਟ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਸਰ ਜੋ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਹਮ ਕੰਡਕਟ ਕਰਵਾਤੇ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਹਸਪੀਟਲ ਮੈਂ तो सर थोड़ा सा all right we were uh, going to get on to <clears throat> this uh, this is a summary of uh, the work up for uh, our diagnostic strategies for post menopausal bleeding that uh, the mainstay here appears to be ultrasound yeah, that you do ultrasound 
And if you find that the endometrium is four millimeter or less than that, look at the risk factors. If uh, the risk factors are there, then uh, may need endometrial sampling. If there are no risk factors that go through that list of the risk factors, then no need of sampling and you can discharge the patient and with the advice to re re revisit if bleeding recurs. On the other hand, if uh, the thickness is more than four millimeter, then uh, endometrial sampling, PIPL or Vabra, plus minus hysteroscopy, sufficient sample, further management depends on the pathology which you find on histopathology. And insufficient sampling, then OPD hysteroscopic evidence of endometrial atrophy. And if there is atrophy of the endometrium, then discharge and revisit if bleeding. And if there is uh, no endometrial atrophy or there is recurrent postmenopausal bleeding, than inpatient hysteroscopy with endometrial sampling. So this is the summary of uh, management of uh, case of postmenopausal bleeding. Now I like to show you a few pictures. Here, this is a patient who presented only. This is the some uh, hysterectomy which I carried out day before yesterday. The patient is still admitted is going to be discharged today, and she had presented with the the ultrasound findings. I, I didn't have the time to include that ultrasound uh, in this, but the findings are endometrium is focally thickened. Our ultrasonologist is very good, Aisha Omar. I like her very much. Endometrium is focally thickened in the upper two thirds in the uterine cavity with cystic changes measuring 43 into 33 into 31 and 29 millimeters. Focal endometrial thickening, rest of the endometrium is thin line, ovaries are visualized normal, and impression is focal endometrial thickening, further investigations are advised. Now, this patient was advised a uh, uh, hysteroscopic evaluation and also I, or DNC, but she said that I want to get rid of this. Uh, she is uh, 56 or so years old. So she opted herself for hysterectomy. Her hysterectomy was carried out, and uh, this is the uh, uh, specimen. The cut specimen showed this. You can see that this is a four into three into three kind of polyp which was projecting here. It is only uh, it has been flipped up because it was occupying whole of the uh, uterus, or particularly the upper part. And you can see here. You can uh, clearly see that this is a polyp. And uh, <clears throat> in all probability, it is going to be a benign one. So if she had undergone hysteroscopic evaluation, a polypectomy and a much simpler and a comparatively minor procedure would have taken care of the issue. Now, this is, uh, uh, this is palm actually. If you look at that, I have gone into the palm is polyp P and uh, A is adenomyosis. This is a specimen of hysteroscopy, uh, a specimen of hysterectomy. And here, this is the cut section. I don't know how far this is uh, clear on uh, the screen here, but in this area, you can see uh, the blood, dark blood filled areas, typical of adenomyosis in the wall. The, uh, the, the wall of the uterus is quite thickened. And you can see also some rudimentary small fibroids and they are subsidous fibroid here also. So this is the second component of palm, which is adenomyosis. And here in this picture, you see fibroids. Uh, you see, um, and I would want you to mark this according to the FIGO classification of fibroids, as to which is FIGO classification two, which is uh, uh, one, which is five, you can do that because this is a, a subserous fibroid here. You can see a subserous fibroid here. This is a, mostly a submucosal fibroid. More than 50% of it is into the endometrial cavity. And you can see here in this picture at least that endometrium is covered over this fibroid here. You see when it, it was kind of uh, uh, the uterine cavity was cut open, uh, you can see that this is And this is a fibroid which is mostly on the outer side, partly in the my, uh, myometrium and mostly in the outside. So this one particular specimen shows you the various uh, types of endometrium and you can then practice on that. And here in this one, 
you see a large submucosal fibroid and here is a marina which was which had previously been placed in but now you see this is the uterine cavity which is then going up like this on this side and to some extent on this side so this was enlarging the size of the uh, uterine cavity because of which there was that bleeding and this is the specimen in which uh, some mucosal fibroids projecting into the uterine cavity, they were removed. And uh, to test the uh, tubal patency, we had injected. These are all uh, um, uh, specimens which were, uh, these surgeries were carried out in the previous two months. We had injected the methylene blue dye and that's why this endometrial covering of part of this polyp is, uh, that, that's why it is blue. And here is a case of a carcinoma of the endometrium, the specimen in which you can partly see a syringe which was uh, for uh, endometrial washings and part of the momentum was also taken which was below this uh, part of the picture. And this is the uh, a histopathology report, endometrioid adenocarcinoma, cervix free of tumor, bilateral fallopian tubes, paratubal cyst left ovary free of tumor. So that was uh, stage one a endometrial cancer and you can see that it is not uh, spread to the uh, myometrium or uh, whatever it is less than 50 mil uh, percent of the myometrial spread and this is a patient who had uh, it's a young patient's uh, specimen of uh, uterus she had a uh, uh, diagnosis of carcinoma of the breast and she had surgery for that and after that she was on chemotherapy and she was she is in her mid 30s she was pregnant her pregnancy was continued and in 2019 and uh, i carried out a cesarean section and the baby was all right and after that further chemotherapy uh, was uh, uh, carried on and then she developed uh, uh, this uh, uh, postmenopausal bleeding because she was on tamoxifen and the endometrium came out to be quite thick. You can see here that it is quite thick and her hysterectomy was carried out because of that. But uh, fortunately for her, uh, this uh, uh, endometrium came out to be non-malignant. There was no malignancy. This hysterectomy was carried out in uh, uh, November last year. And uh, only uh, last week she uh, came again with uh, some bit of bleeding. She has metastatic disease and there was a small bit of uh, tissue at the top of the vault which showed uh, from which she was having some bleeding but it turned out to be only a polyp, a small granulation tissue polyp. So that was it. So this is, uh, these are some of the cases uh, which uh, uh, go on to kind of show the palm uh, or structural abnormalities of uh, now uh, someone asked about uh, the studies to be carried out uh, within the unit i think that uh, when uh, i i placed in these pictures these these are from my own collection as i said of last couple of months after every surgery uh, i take a picture of the specimen and uh, i store it my, in my computer now, this is something which what you can do uh, if, uh, um, uh, for example, you you start uh, collecting uh, the data of uh, all the uh, you, you prepare a performer, first of all, which will have uh, important points of history uh, and examination um, in which you will uh, rule out, you will enumerate all the uh, uh, risk factors, presenting features, history, detailed history. This this has to be a A4 size one page performer. And uh, then our presentation and the workup that was carried out, uh, whether you, uh, what were the findings on, uh, the relevant findings on, uh, uh, say, ultrasound, and uh, what kind of further investigation was carried out, and uh, what was the result, and uh, uh, how uh, did you proceed, and uh, what was the follow up like. So, you have that one performer with you and uh, at the end of a year or two years and you can distribute it amongst uh, your uh, colleagues that in the OPD or in the admitted patients you have those and at the end of a year or two years when you have a reasonable number of say uh, 50 patients or 100 patients 
because you don't have to compare in this you are just looking at what uh, what was the incidence of uh, say a, uh, endometrial cancer uh, endometrial hyperplasia and incidence of polyps in women who were presenting with postmenopausal bleeding in OPD. This is something, and then you can uh, even publish that because if you look at those multi center studies, uh, which comprise of say 500 patients or so, uh, sometimes they are carried out in um, uh, quite a few centers, and each center contributes about 50 to 70 or 100 patients. And uh, that one study is. Uh, 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 th that will be uh, publishable if you have about 100 uh, patients. Uh, and you can say that uh, in our patient population, say wherever you are working, um, uh, in a district headquarters hospital or in a teaching hospital, in wh wh whichever province, and you can send it to some of your colleagues in other areas, in other cities, and uh, you can compare say, what is the incidence of this thing in patient population presenting at, say, um, Jinnah Hospital, Lahore, and uh, JPMC, Karachi, uh, or Lady Reading Hospital, Peshawar. And uh, that's how you can compare that. And um, you will have a lot of data. You, will, uh, you can um, uh, collate that. And it is all very simple. You don't have to have uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, chemical analyses or uh, other investigations, etc. Simple, as uh, and uh, PIPL uh, is uh, quite cheap. I think it costs only two hundred or two hundred fifty rupees. So this is something uh, which is quite practical, which is not uh, resource intensive, and uh, uh, you don't need uh, hi-fi labs for this. So you can do that. Any questions? This is uh, this presentation is now finalized and uh, this is finished. We'll take up another subject uh, later on, and that will be announced. But this presentation is going to be put on, uh, I'll put it uh, on the uh, WhatsApp group of uh, our trainees here. And uh, uh, I'll ask them to, uh, to, to uh, uh, create another group, uh, which includes uh, uh, the participants from uh, this group. Huh? The, the already uh -huh. so you you can then transfer oh, that over to them right any questions please awaaz aa bhi rahi hai ki nahi ja rahi ji sir aa rahi hai aapki awaaz sir yusuf bhi aa gaye chale good good welcome uh, professor yusuf latif khan क्या हाल है आपका आपका माइक अनम्यूट होने वाला है सर आपकी